besides the seawall and, and grade raising, was there anything else that came out of the 1900 storm that we learned to, to protect physically from hurricanes? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the, the seawall and grade raising are both tremendous. One of the world's longest seawalls. And now the seawall, I know the sidewalk on the seawall runs about 10 miles. It's the world's longest continuous sidewalk. It's just a tremendous seawall. And the, the pictures of the seawall actually show the 17 foot drop, you know, and, and that was all filled in by the grade raising. So imagine raising an inhabited island, 500 city blocks, 2000 buildings. The, the feat of this, of what they did with the grade raising was tremendous. They dug a canal on the inner part of the seawall built four ocean going ships in Europe called dredge hoppers, sailed them across the Atlantic. And then over a six year period, dredged up sediment from Galveston Bay, floated in on the canal and just were piping that sediment into the city. That was really the main thing they did, but it was tremendous effort to raise not only a city, but you know, a, not only an island, but an inhabited city. They raised the churches, they raised the buildings. It was tremendous effort that they did. I think those are really the, the main things and it, it really has protected us a lot. When we look at Hurricane Ike, we see the high water marks downtown as bad as Hurricane Ike was, and in downtown Galveston, the high water marks are actually the highest on record. Still, the seawall really protected us from the massive waves. I mean, that, a lot of Galveston would have been not just flooded, but destroyed by storms like Parla and Ike had we not had the seawall and the Great Raising. The problem is most people die from water, from flood water, from storm surge and heavy rain. So when a lot of, so I guess just meteorologically, Ike was a category two, the 1900 storm in Galveston was more like a category three, but Ike was geographically enormous. It was this geographically huge storm. So even though it was a category two, it was pushing tremendous amounts of salt water. The 1900 storm destroyed so much of Galveston and actually created this debris wall kind of around downtown. Essentially, I think that's what would have happened here more if you take away the seawall and the grade rays have kind of that effect. But people often think worst case scenario, you get hit by the eye. Actually, the worst case scenario for Galveston would be the eye hitting south of us. Down by, the eye came in at Jamaica Beach or down by Surfside, places like that. That's something that if Hurricane Ike hit today, it would flood a bunch of houses that didn't flood 15 years ago, just because we're sinking and the sea levels are rising. So that's, a, that's another concern as well uh, related with climate change. This climate change can be pretty contentious depending on who you're talking to. So you basically dive into this data. So I kind of want to get into some of your work today, which you did a great job covering now, I understand you have a team that are working on gathering all this data and looking at data over the past 150 years or so, and then, you know, trying to check out the trajectory. Where are we going to end up in 10, 15 years? 